live with two superheroes. The first one does not wear a cape. He is my son. Hello, everybody. My name is Tim Sharp. I'm a world famous artist. I was born in 1988 and I'm 25. <laughs> <laughs> and who's the other one, Tim? Ladies, big man. I met him up when I was 11 years old. I have a lot of ideas in my head. I want a superhero of my own. And who's another superhero that you like? Batman. Who created Batman? Bob Kane. What year was Bob Kane born? 1915. And what year did he die and how old was he? 1998-83. And who was the President of the United States of America in 1998? Bill Clinton. And how old would Bill Clinton be this year? 68. And how old would he be in the year 2032? 86. Very good, that's excellent. <laughs> this is Laser Beak Man. <laughs> Have a look at his feet. Good. Sorry, we've never seen him that big before. <laughs> And definitely not in the Sydney Opera House before. That's cool. That's really cool. We love it. Love it. Love it. Thank you. The laser big man is not like other superheroes. There's not a lot of kapow and extraordinary superpowers about him. Instead, there is a lot of humour. There's a different way to look at life. And there's also a lot of Tim. This artwork is called A Double Shot of Happiness. And that is the story of my life. <laughs> Shall we show them some more, Tim? Sure. <laughs> okay. the, bu the barbecue. <laughs> Good work. Picking up chicks. <laughs> Black sheep of the family. Psychic. <laughs> <laughs> I love some bird country, a land of sweeping plains. <laughs> Lays big man tells Wiggles to shut up. <laughs> These are excellent, Tim. I know, I'm a very good artist. You are. <laughs> The day Tim was born was the happiest day of my life. I had never ever seen anything so perfect or imagined that it was possible to love somebody else so much. But things soon fell apart, and when Tim was 20 days old, I was at the doctor's saying, what's wrong with my baby? I was back at the doctor's nearly every week asking the same questions, but not getting any answers. Instead, the suggestion was that there was something wrong with me that I was not coping, that I was depressed, that I was just a bad mother. Tim wasn't sleeping, he was distressed all the time. He had trouble eating. Some sounds absolutely terrified him. His play was solo and repetitive. Trying to take him anywhere was almost impossible as he cried and screamed so much. He wasn't at all like the little girl next door who was born at exactly the same time. Often I heard the words, what's wrong with your son? I've never seen another kid like him. Often I wondered if he was deaf. And often I wondered if he liked me even just a little bit. My main concern was that he wasn't developing speech. And I was told to wait until he was three that he might just catch up. So the appointment was made for the day after his third birthday, and that was the worst day of my life. He was supposed to be the best specialist in town, but he was also the cruelest. He told me that Tim had autism, and he said that Tim's problems were so severe and all-encompassing that there was no hope for Tim. He said that Tim would never speak, he would never go to school, and he would never learn anything. He told me to put him away and just forget about him. He also told me that Tim couldn't feel anything for me, that he didn't love me that he never could and he never would, that he only used me as a tool to get what he wanted. He said it was best that I just got on my, my own life and forget that I'd even had him. 
His words were a knife going deep into my heart. By the time I got to the car, I was absolutely hysterical. So I was strapping Tim into his little car seat. And as I was, Tim was patting me on the back and wiping away my tears. He was trying to comfort me. He did love me. He had already proven that doctor wrong, and Tim and I would do this together. I was desperate to hear my son communicate, to communicate with him, and I wanted to hear his voice. At the very least, I needed to teach him some words he would need in life, like food or water or help. I also hoped that one day I might hear the words, Mum. And I had a more secret wish that one day I may even hear the words, I love you, Mum. And that would have been the ultimate moment of my life. Sadly for me, I had only learnt one way to communicate, which is get someone's attention, maintain it, and use words. Even if I'm talking to someone with another language, I can point or gesture or act things out. But none of that worked with Tim. Just trying to get his attention for a few short moments would take all day sometimes, and then it would be gone. I had to find another way to communicate with my son. He was too young to read, but I knew that he could see. So one day I sat at the table and I started to draw for him. Now I have no artistic talent whatsoever. <laughs> so I was drawing stick figures and much to my surprise, Tim came over and he was really interested. So I drew for him what we were doing that day. We're getting in the car, we're going to the party, we give the boy the present, we say happy birthday, blow out the candles and then we come home. Tim stayed there the whole time. He was captivated. When I finished, I put down the pencil, and Tim took my hand and pushed it back to the pencil, indicating that he wanted more. That was a huge breakthrough, as it was the first time Tim had clearly told me what he wanted, and it had come about through art. It took Tim nearly a year before he started to draw, but from that very first drawing, it was clear there was something pretty special. Drawing became a huge part of our daily lives. From 10 words that Tim used rarely, his vocabulary grew to 100 words. Uh, I never got any better at drawing. <laughs> <laughs> but Tim did, and he also got a lot better at speaking as well. Then at 11 years of age, Tim was walking around the house saying, when I grow up, I'm going to be laser beak man. And I said, good for you, Tim. So I thought I'd better have a look at this laser beak man, and he was cute and he was funny and he made me smile. Tim had always loved superheroes and he wanted one of his very own. Don't we all? <laughs> so this is the very first drawing of laser beak man. <laughs> it was a... <laughs> great. <laughs> it was a friend's birthday coming up and we had no money back then, so I decided we'd make a card. So Tim drew Laser Beak Man on the front and I said to him, what would Laser Beak Man say, Tim? Have a filthy, disgusting birthday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're on sale at the front too, by the way. <laughs> on your way out. At 16, Tim became the um, only Australian selected for the world's largest arts festival for people with disabilities in Washington, D.C. Uh, inclusion into the festival was dependent on attending, so I mortgaged the house. Tim, his brother Sam and I went to Washington. Tim carried the Australian flag into the opening ceremony at the John F. Kennedy Performing Arts Centre. <laughs> and I still get quite emotional now when I recall his beaming face. It was such a moment, I cannot tell you. Um, the ABC's Australian story came with us, and after they screened the story of Tim's trip to Washington, his art career took off, and it hasn't stopped. A small film about Tim has been shown in the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City. His art is hanging in galleries and collections all around the world. The ABC screened an eight-episode animated TV series of Laser Big Man, which was then shown, um, sold on to Cartoon Network, making Tim the first person in the world with autism to have his creation turned into an animated series. <laughs> uh, 
a young rock band from Nashville, Tennessee, Cameron Burnett and the Ghost Ballerinas Googled the words colourful, happy art and came up with the name Tim Sharp. They asked Tim to create the artwork for his album cover, which they did, <laughs> that you did. The boys were so inspired by Tim that they decided to put on the I Am What I Am Music Festival for Autism Awareness. Tim and I went to Nashville, and the best part of that festival was having young people with autism and young people without autism coming together and just doing what young people do, hanging out, having fun at a rock show. Inspiring inclusion is one of Tim's greatest achievements. Did you like going to Nashville, Tim? I loved it. I had the great time ever making new friends in the band. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> On the 1st of February, 1992, I escaped from a very abusive marriage. I fled the house in fear with my two little boys. Tim was not quite four, and Sam was not quite two. We went to a house with no electricity because I couldn't afford to have it connected. At times we received food from the Salvation Army, for which I am eternally grateful. In the winter time, we all slept in one bed, because I couldn't afford to buy the blankets we needed. There was no money for therapy or therapists for Tim. Instead, I had to do everything that I could think of, and I had to do it by myself. On the 1st of February, 2011, exactly 19 years later to the very day, Tim and I sat in an office just across the harbour from here. It was the office of Miss Kate Blanchett. We had met her a few months earlier at one of Tim's art exhibitions and told her of Tim's dream to have Laser Beak Man come alive on the stage. We had come to Sydney to discuss that with her and Tim was charming everyone in the room. <laughs> he and Miss Blanchett were laughing together and were excited by the ideas that were being discussed. But to be honest, I didn't exactly pay attention to everything that was being said. <laughs> I didn't really listen because I was sitting there in absolute disbelief at how far Tim had come in 19 years to be the funny, intelligent, incredibly polite, extraordinary young man he was in that meeting. 19 years earlier, I probably would not have got him in that room. And if I had, he would have been crying and screaming and doing everything he could to escape. And my heart would have been broken to see him in such distress. 19 years earlier, never ever in my wildest dreams could I ever imagine that such a day would come about. I was too scared to dream back then. I didn't look to the future. I couldn't see any hope for us. I didn't know what was going to happen to Tim, and I didn't know if I could do it by myself. The only thing I did know was that I had to try. I had to get up every day and just try. And if something didn't work out, I had to get up the next day and try another way. The inspiration to try like that came from Tim. Autism is an all-encompassing condition that affects every part of life. Tim was living in a world of terror and confusion. To me, Autism, the cruelest part of autism, is that it steals the very essence of our being, the reason we are all here today, to connect. Yet Tim always tried to step outside those fears. If he could do that, then surely I could too. I knew that I would never, ever, ever give up, but I quickly learned that I could always give a little bit more. Tim. You are a superhero for Sam and I. You are my very own double shot of happiness. Thank you. <laughs> I was born to do my artwork and makes me happy. Mum always sits with me when I draw. Would I do it without her? Definitely not. You have to try hard in life. Every day is a good day for me. Every day is a happy day for me. Mum and I are a good team. We are nice to each other. We are never mean to each other. We like hanging out. She is my mum and my best friend. She is beautiful and excellent. Hello, my mum. <laughs>
All you need is love. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.